If you live in Montana, you may be the only person that is safe from being fired. Let me, let me explain, because I was not aware of this. Montana is literally the only state in the United States that is not a fire at will state, all right? The reason I bring this up, so many people that I know personally have been let go from their jobs in the last 12 months, 2023, and already I've known two people so far this year who have been let go from their jobs. No apparent reason, no heads up, nothing. Just go into work and ah, we're not gonna need you here anymore. And the other person that got fired this year so far got the phone call the day before they're supposed to go to work. They said, hey, listen, unfortunately you're no longer needed. And they don't have to give you a reason except in Montana. So every other state, we are pretty much at will on the chopping block, which is terrifying for a lot of people because it, it, it's crazy to me how as an employee, we are expected to give a two weeks notice to our employer. They want a two weeks notice so that they can replace you and whatever else. But how often do they afford you the same, um, what's the right word? Uh, concern isn't really it. The same Y'all, I don't know. I haven't had breakfast and no uh, tea, hot tea yet, so my brain isn't braining. But they don't afford you the same whatever that they expect you to give them when it comes to leaving your job and or them letting you go, right? So every state except for Montana can, at any point in time, as long as you're non-contracted, meaning you're not in a binding contract like with a, a 1099 group, like let's say you have a contract for somebody to replace your roof or to do something like that. Those are different fire at wills. It's not exactly the same as opposed to somebody who's a W-2 employee. It's a little bit different. So if you're a W-2 employee, any state except for Montana can, can say, you're done you're done and you have no recourse, no say, no legal action to go with it, right? They don't have to have a reason. They don't have to give you a reason. They don't have to, it doesn't have to make sense. They don't have to care if you don't have any money in your account to buy groceries the next day to pay your rent, pay your mortgage, pay your insurance, whatever else. They can just say, get out, right? Except for Montana. So I looked this up because I was very curious and it says Montana, the only state in the union where at will employment laws do not apply. This says in the union, but it's literally in the United States um, is where they do not apply. Montana is one of the only states whose laws allow for employees to have an extra layer of protection. In other states, uh, employers can fire an uncontracted at will employee at any time and for any legal reason. In Montana, work at will laws only apply during a probation period that is a standard six months unless otherwise established at the time of employment. Upon conclusion of the probationary period, Montana employers must have valid cause in order to terminate one's employment. So there's a loophole even with Montana. So some, some of these uh, websites I've looked at say it's six months, some say it's 12 months. I think it just kind of depends. I don't know if it depends on what sector you're working in in Montana, but in the first six months or 12 months, you can leave anytime you want and they can fire you at will anytime they want because that's considered the probationary period. However, after that, only Montana has to have a valid reason to fire you. They have to have some sort of evidence of why they're getting rid of you or some sort of legal uh, reason why they're getting rid of you or something that gives um, backing, I guess you could say, to why they're going to fire you. Nobody else does that. I know from personal experience that Georgia could give two shits about you and they will fire you like that for nothing. Now, that's a, that's the state. You can get away with it with the state. Now, there's going to be certain employers who aren't going to be like that. I used to work for a very large Fortune 250 corporation and I was kind of high up there, not high up like in corporate, but like whatever. I was I was high enough up that I knew the the legal ramifications of firing people, hiring people, whatever else. And you had to have a three strike policy. This was their a three strikes you're out policy was their thing. Even though in Georgia, you can just get rid of anybody anytime you want. Same thing in Ohio, same thing in California, Texas, uh, Delaware, lots of different states. I have all of them here to show you. But th certain employers will make it so that to cover their own butts, I'm assuming, even though there is no legal ramification, um, no legal things that you can do as an employee who gets fired, they still want to cover their butts, a lot of these different corporations. So they'll have a three strikes you're out policy. That way there is no question as to why you've been let go, whatever else. And that way you are uh, given a heads up that you're on the chopping block. Not everybody does that, obviously. There are plenty of people out there, probably some of y'all even, who in the last 12, 24, 48 months, 36, 48, I can't do math in my head like that, have gotten let go with no 
reason. And they're gonna, they were going to say, you know, well, because the economy is bad or because the economy is good. I mean, there's so many reasons that they could give you why they let you go. I got fired. I've been fired twice in my life. Two times I have been fired and two times it was for no reason whatsoever. Let me explain. So I, this is also why personally for me and everybody's going to be different, obviously, but for me, it makes it very hard for me to trust going back into corporate America, into some place where somebody holds my paycheck in their hands and it can at will fire me anytime they want, right? Being an entrepreneur works much better for me because I know what I do determines whether I get paid or not and things like that. It's not up to somebody else at that point. Although technically everything relies on give and take and client and uh, whatever. But anyway, so when I was, let's see, seven, no, no, no. How old was I? I was, hold on. I have to think back y'all. Y'all, you don't realize how old you are until you have to think back to something that happened when you were younger. I realize I have now been out of high school longer than I, or out of school longer than I was in school. Like that's, that's a weird way to think about your age, but that's where we are. I turned 42 this month and I'm like, huh, well, time sure did fly by. You know, you, you spend your whole adolescence, can't wait to be grown so you can do all these fun things. And then you get grown and you're like, ooh, ooh, bills. Ooh, doctor's appointments. Ooh, all these things like, oh, no, take it back. Go back to adolescence. It's so much easier and so much more fun. Um, but anyway, so I've been fired from two jobs. One of them, the first time I got fired was from a hair salon that I worked at. Let me explain to you what happened because me getting fired made absolutely no sense and there was nothing I could do about it. And here's the problem with getting fired that at will fire, they can just let you go for whatever. There's no severance pay. There's no, you know, we're going to give you two weeks, but to find something new, there's none of that. It is literally you're done and then you're done. And if you have a car payment at whatever age you're at, it sucks to be you. Good luck finding another job fast enough to make your car payment, not have to ask mom and dad or mom because dad sucked and he wasn't around. But anyway, um, my first job I got fired from was at a hair salon. One of the stylists had her friend come in and was and cut her hair, colored her hair and got all these different hair supplies for her, right? Uh, shampoo, conditioner, stuff like that. When it came time to ring them up, because that's what I did, I was a receptionist, I did not do hair. As you can tell by my always just dirty hair, messy buns, I don't, I don't know how to take care of my own hair. Don't let me touch yours. You'll end up looking like weird Barbie or something. So I was the receptionist and the, the stylist brought her client up who was her friend with all of her stuff and gave me their total and her friend gave me her credit card and I ran her credit card and it got declined. And she says, oh no, maybe that one's not activated yet. So she gives me a different credit card and I run it and it gets declined. So we do this on four or five different credit cards and every single one gets declined. So I call the owner of the salon and I say, hey, listen, I don't know if it's this person or if it's the system right now because we've tried four or five different credit cards and every single one is getting declined. What do you want me to do? And the owner said, you need to get payment. And I said, okay, I will make sure I get payment, right? That's all I could do. So then the stylist says, I'm going to pay for it. They can go ahead and go, I'll pay for it at the end of my shift because, you know, uh, maybe it's the system. And if it is, I can just get their card over the phone. If not, I'll pay for it. They can pay me back later. Okay, cool. So they leave. The stylist is going to pay at the end of the shift. The owner comes in and says, did you get payment? And I said, the credit card machine still isn't doing anything. It's like not working. So um, the stylist is going to pay for it. And I immediately got fired for letting them leave. And I was like, well, I don't know if I'm in the wrong or not when payment is going to be made. Any other stylist that would do that, it'd be perfectly fine. There was no issues before. They've done it numerous times. Yet that day, the owner, I guess, had a hair up his butt and was not in a good mood. And I got fired on the spot. And even the stylist was like, hey, I'm going to pay for it at the end of my shift today. So I don't understand what's happening. He's like, no, I told her that she has to get payment. And I'm like, you didn't specify like right this second, you've got the stylist here that's going to pay for it. Like, did I do something wrong? And I, to this day, I'm like, I feel like that's a very wavy line, but instead of, I mean, it just fired me on the spot. And I don't remember how old I was. I think I was 21 or 22. I was young. I wasn't in high school. I was out of high school. I had an apartment I had to pay for. I had a car note I had to pay for. I had groceries I needed to pay for. And I had insurance I needed to pay for and gas, right? And so I got fired. I'd been there for probably three or four years at that point. And I'm like, 
this is literally the most un like expected thing in the history of things to happen to me. I did not expect to get fired. It came out of absolutely nowhere. And it's in the middle of like the summer where most people are already fully booked up with whoever they're going to hire because that's when most people are getting jobs in the summer, like high school kids and younger people and whatever else. And I didn't have a college degree. I didn't go to college. Right. So then I'm like, well, what the crap am I supposed to do now? That one I felt was an unjustified firing. But because in Georgia, you can fire at will, I had no recourse. I went and tried to get unemployment. You can even, in Georgia, I don't know about other states, you can even decline unemployment. So I got turned down for unemployment because the owner told the unemployment office that I stole from the company because I did not run the credit card. I, he said, I stole from the company because I did not run the credit card because the stylist was going to pay for it at the end of her shift after everything was all done and she had all her tips and everything else. So not only did I get fired, I also had no unemployment and I had to quickly go find a new job, which I did. Another time I got fired, let me explain y'all is the stupidest thing in the history of things besides that one. But there used to be a place I worked at when I was younger, I was like 18 or 19 on this one. And, uh, the place I worked was a sporting goods store. Okay. And at the sporting goods store, there was a commission base, right? And so the people who worked in sales got these little stickers and you had to put them on the products that you were selling to people. And so I'm at the register. I was a cashier. And when things would come through, I would scan it and, and go, I had no clue on whose stickers were what or whatever else. Well, one day I'm doing my job like normal and I get called into the office and I'm like, what is this about? So I go to the office and I get in there and they said, you know, we're going to have to let you go. And I'm like, that's cute. It's not April 1st. What are we doing? What's up? Come on now. What, am I getting promoted? Uh, what? You want me to work more hours? What's up? I have a lovely personality. I know you don't want to get rid of me. And they said, no, you've been helping steal from the company. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So one of the people that, um, had their sticker on a bunch of things that were coming through the line was not at work that day. So they said that I was putting in the person's number to help them get a commission, even though they weren't there. And I'm like, how am I supposed to know whose number is whose? Like, I didn't know at that point. I was new, kind of new ish. And they said that I was helping that person steal because those are commission based things. So every transaction that went through that had their number on it, they were going to get paid for and they weren't even there. And I was like, well, what if some of these things had been returns and they still had the sticker on it from when it was purchased? Or what if this person that you're saying I'm helping went through and put their sticker on a bunch of stuff in their department in hopes of making commission? Like there was nobody checking that kind of thing and nothing to stop it. But because I couldn't prove that I wasn't doing anything wrong and they couldn't prove that I was doing anything wrong, they just at will fired me. Those are the two times I've been fired in my life. And both times I'm like, are you effing kidding me? Like, these are the stupidest things I've ever heard in my entire life. And it wasn't even when the economy was bad. It wasn't anything else. And I'm like, it made absolutely no sense to me. Now, at my age now, if I were to be in corporate America or any kind of W-2 job where they could at will fire me, please understand I would have a massive panic attack because there are so many places that are not hiring that if you get laid off, it is going to be very hard to find something different, especially in your same profession, in your same field. I mean, there's going to be restaurant jobs if you want to go wait tables, which I used to love waiting tables, but even those are few and far between in a lot of places, very hard to hold on to because the money in them is, is it's really crappy. You have some states that are still paying that two thirteen an hour plus tips. You have other states that are paying an hourly wage and no tips. And then you have places like, Oh, what state was it in? Kevin talked about it. He told me about it. This tilted kilt in Kansas. Oh, I don't know. This group, this, this group, this company bought up these like different restaurants and they told the, the waitresses at Tilted Kilt, if you've ever been there, it's like a Hooters, but like a, a X-rated Hooters. I don't even know what to call it. They're in like little schoolgirl outfits, which is kind of weird if you really want to think about it and grown men go there and like, mm. but anyway, um, so what they told the employees there is that they're going to get they're part of their tip taken out of their check, the 3.5% 
Y'all, the stupidest thing ever. The 3.5% um, transaction fee that a lot of credit card companies charge the, the restaurants and businesses, a lot of restaurants and businesses now are passing it on to you and I. They're at, if you're not paying cash, they're adding that 3%, 3.5% on at the end of your bill. Well, they have told this, this group, oh, I've got to find the name. I don't know the name. It's in Kevin's video. He talked about it. But it still absolutely blows my mind. This group in, with Tilted Kilt, they told the waitresses that their tips at the end of the at the end of the night they're going to take 3.5 percent of their tips away from them to cover the credit card transactions if it's a credit card tip which is the dumbest thing i've ever heard of in my life not only are they hurting their servers they're hurting the people that want to patron these places um patronize nope that's not the right word patronize is a bad word um patronage i don't know the right word Patronize is supposed to be the right word, but that feels condescending. So I don't think that's the right word, y'all. <laughs> Whatever. The people who go to these places, um, it's going to hurt them because you're going to have less and less servers that are willing to work there if you're going to get dinged for doing a good job and getting a tip. I mean, it's only 3.5%, but it's still the fact of the matter is these that employer is taking money that was earned by the server and using it to cover their own fees. Like, why don't you cover your own fees? Either raise your prices so you can cover your fees or pass it along to the customers if you want to. But why would you pass it along to your employees? That part does not make sense to me. And it gets me thinking, I wonder how, how often that happens in corporate America where let's say you have a job and you, whatever job you have, you have to have a uniform. Generally speaking, they don't pay for us or you and us, because I used to have uniforms, to go out and buy the pants, to buy the shoes, to buy the shirt that you have to have. There are even places where you have to have like a name tag and you have to pay for that name tag yourself. And those kind of things are, are in my opinion, really crappy. It's a way to like nickel and dime your employee and, and, and screw them over out of their own money for something that you deem they must have in order to have the job. Like those kind of things don't make sense to me. But this fire at will thing is absolutely ridiculous because there are so many places right now that are struggling with getting money in the doors so they're firing people left and right for literally no apparent reason because they don't have to have an apparent reason i looked it up um i was trying to find there's this uh paycor.com i saw this article and it says which employees are at will employment states and it was saying the U.S. labor law heavily favors employers. Employment is generally at will and can therefore be terminated at any time. There is usually no burden on employers to prove just cause. They simply have to avoid discriminatory or illegal action. However, many states do apply important exemptions. And um, I was looking at it at will employment by state. So state is public. There's this whole go away. There's this map right here, which is kind of hard to see. This map, can y'all see that little colorful guideline thing at the bottom? This shows you the at-will states and what's what. So this dark gray says no exemptions apply. Georgia being one of them. That's why Georgia and Florida and uh, Maine and New York and um, Louisiana are no exemptions apply. Now, again, Montana is the only one. Employment at will applies only during six-month probation period, so it is six months. Then you have all these light yellow ones here on the West Coast. State has public policy exemptions and covenant of good faith applies, whatever that means. And then everybody else here in the U.S. that's in orange, you are state has public policy exemptions. And then only Nebraska and Alabama have covenant of good faith applies. So... I don't know exactly what that means. I'm not even going to lie. Let's see. Um, doesn't tell me. Oh, covenant of good faith. Many states also maintain a further exception requiring employers act in good faith. For instance, the termination of an employee's employment relationship immediately before they were due to receive a large commission could be interpreted as being in bad faith. Similarly, an employer cannot give false reasons for an employee's termination. All right, so in good faith means they're not firing you at bad timing. <laughs> Basically, they're firing you because they, because they need to, not because they don't want to pay you for the commissions that you have earned, which I feel like that happens a lot, unfortunately. And then the other one that said, let's see, what was the other one? 
public policy exemptions. Let's see what that is. So public policy exemption. The majority of states apply some form of public policy exemption, preventing the termination of an employment relationship if this would violate public policy. This means that an employee can't be fired for refusing to do something that would go against state law for reporting a violation of the law or when an employee has acted in the greater good of the public, like performing jury duty. Now, that's 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 funny to me when an employee has acted in the greater good of the public yet in Georgia, because again, Georgia, they can fire you for any reason. There was a guy who worked at Macy's at mall of Georgia who tried to stop this guy who came in and, um, to rob the place and he got shot or stabbed. I don't remember which one. And then, um, the, the employee did. And then Macy's fired the employee for trying to stop the, the robbery because now there's a health issue at hand because the person got hurt. And that can be something that that employee, can then later sue for because Macy's didn't have uh, metal detectors or Macy's security wasn't able to stop the guy and the employee had to. So that to me though, it's considered, um, where did I go? Hold on. I lost the little note that to me, I would think is acted in the greater good of the public yet in Georgia, they don't care about the public or the greater good. So broski got canned. Listen, I think it's important for every single person out there who has a job, who has a W-2 coming in, no matter where you work, to understand exactly what your state laws are when it comes to your employer letting you go, to firing you, to laying you off, to anything like that, so that you know how to keep yourself covered because we don't know what 2024 is going to bring. We don't know what's going to happen in 2024. We want the economy to get better. We want job force to, you know, lift up and people be able to go back to work and have jobs and not have to worry about it. But this whole entire since 2020 has been such a roller coaster and we're only just now literally at the like baby little precipice of 2024. We've just walked over it. We have 11 and three quarter months left. It's hard to know what's going to happen. So I think personally that knowing exactly what your state laws are, knowing what your company's policy is, is extremely important to ensuring not only that you stay employed, but also your sanity, your anxiety, your mental health, your everything else. If you know what can and cannot happen to you, it kind of helps you breathe a little bit easier in theory, unless of course it's really bad, but in theory, it'll help you breathe a little easier and give you a little bit of, um, comfort and the knowledge of what can and cannot happen to you. So uh, I can't sit there and go through every single employee employer in the history of the United States, right? You guys will have to look it up on your own for your own employer, but it is definitely worth looking into. So you know exactly what they can and cannot do to you in the, in, in this year, in 2024 and coming years. So that's it. I just wanted to bring that to your attention because there are so many people that are getting fired for no reason and it's legal, which it's crazy to me. It's absolutely crazy to me. Whereas if we, they say that employees can quit at any time too, except for in Montana, again, it only have six months for that. But if I were to have a job and just quit, you can't use them as a reference. You, they say that it's legal, but it's only legal for the employee to screw over the employee. It's not okay for the employee to say, screw this employer. You know what I'm saying? Because then you go to get your next job and they're like, well, we need to talk to your last three employment places. And you go, okay, well, here's the number. And they go, they never gave us a two week notice. And then you look like you are a flight risk and then it's hard to get the next job. So although you and I would two week notice to keep our butts covered, the employer does not have to do the same. And I think that's very, very important to keep in mind because at the end of the day, there's too many people out there who are basing so much of their life around their job when their job could give two shits about them. So keep that in mind. Family is most important. Your life is most important. Job is necessary, obviously, to make the money to afford life, but don't give your all to your employer because they're not going to give even a shred of anything back to you. Not all employers. There are some really great ones out there, but I'm going to say the majority of W2 places could give two craps about their employees. So that's it. I got way more later today, but as you can see, I have not gotten ready. I have nothing. It's just a friend of mine. I, I saw it on Facebook. They got canned and it made me think about it and I wanted to talk to you guys about it. So that's why you get early mom morning face and hair and whatnot. Uh, I love you all immensely squirrel tribe. Thanks for letting me kind of word vomit this out to you. I hope you have a good rest of your morning. I'm going to see you again later. Okay. Love you. Bye.